Hello and welcome to another edition of First Chapter Friday. I'm Miss Andy and I am here from the Alameda Free Library. I'm going to share with you today the first chapter of The First Rule of Punk by Celia C. Perez, published by Viking Penguin Books. Here is chapter one of The First Rule of Punk by Celia C. Perez. Chapter one. Dad says punk rock only comes in one volume, loud. So when I slipped my headphones over my ears, I turned the music up until bass strings thumped, cymbals hissed, and guitar strings squealed like they were having a conversation with each other. Mom says my music is a racket, but to me, it's like the theme music to my life, and it always helps me concentrate. I ripped a page out of a magazine, then squeezed my fingers inside the blue plastic holes of an old pair of school scissors. It was a little too close for comfort, but my real scissors, the ones made of steel with a black handle, were packed away and I had to get this done. It was now or never. I maneuvered the blades carefully around the page. I liked the feeling of the scissors slicing through the glossy paper, especially when I got to the very last snip and freed the exact piece I wanted. The word I cut out stuck to my sweaty fingertips and I carefully placed it on the floor where my zine supplies were spread out around me. There were sheets of unlined paper and old magazines dad had given me, an uncapped purple glue stick, and a folder so fat with clip art that papers spilled out over the opening. The yellow Whitman sampler box that held my colored pencils, stickers, and scraps of paper still smelled like chocolate, but no longer contained a delicious assortment of candy. While hunched over the magazine, looking for more letters to cut out, a pair of leathered sandaled feet suddenly appeared. I looked up at mom, who stood over me and her her Echo in Mexico t-shirt, and a knee-length gauzy skirt. Her lips moved, but her words were no match for my music. Finally, she pointed to her ears. Super Mexican strikes again, I said, pulling the headphones down around my neck. Super Mexican is my nickname for mom. She's always trying to school me on stuff about Mexico and Mexican-American people. I think her main goal in life is to make me into her ideal Mexican-American senorita. Plus, she likes to wear these embroidered dresses and skirts and wraps called rebosos. I call this her super Mexican uniform. Mom acts like it annoys her, but I think she secretly likes the nickname. Funny, Mom said. You're all done packing? I guess. I glanced over at the pile of boxes and bags next to the door. Mom told me to bring everything I needed, but not to overpack, which didn't make any sense. My room wasn't my room without my things. There were only a few belongings I decided to leave behind and they became the only signs that I'd ever lived here. I felt like someone had taken a giant pink pearl eraser and rubbed me out of the picture. Great, Mom said. Your dad will be here in an hour, so get ready. I am ready. I looked down at my t-shirt and shorts. Mom's eyes moved over my clothes with their super scanning powers, looking for holes, stains, and other unsenorita-like offenses to point out. But before she could comment on anything, she noticed the magazine I was cutting. Malu, that's not my new magazine that just came in the mail, is it? I gave mom an unapologetic smirk to let her know that it was. I'll take that, thank you very much, she said, holding out her hand. If you need magazines, check the recycling bin. Yes, ma'am, I said, and I saluted before I handed her the copy of Bon Appetit. I put my headphones back on and grabbed a blank sheet of paper. I had to get this zine done before Dad came to pick me up. I started making zines earlier this year when I discovered Dad's collection of punk music zines from his high school days. Zines are self-published booklets, like homemade magazines, and they can be about anything, not just punk. There are zines about all kinds of topics, like video games and candy and skateboarding. A zine can be a tribute to someone or something you love, and nerd, about, nerd out about, or a place to share ideas and opinions. Dad said they're also a good way to write about what, you th what you're thinking or feeling, kind of like a diary that you share with people. Mine are mostly about stuff I find interesting or want to know more about, but ever since Mom told me we were moving, a lot of my zines had become about that. Mom made it seem like this move was no big deal because we'd be back when her new job contract expired but two years might as well be forever. Two years meant all of middle school, and I couldn't even imagine what two years away from dad would feel like. 
It was a very big deal. So for the next hour, I wrote and cut and pasted a final plea to mom. I glued the last letter onto a page just as the doorbell rang to single, signal that my time was up. There is no place like home, home, home. Home is dad and Marty, Marty the poet, not him. Marty the cute, the cutie, him. Let's go listen to some music at Spins and Needles Records. Okay. These are her zines. Unchained books, bookstore cat. Books, not a graph. Movies at the Hippodrome. Skating, or trying to, outside the art building on campus. Garlic butter rolls, spinach and tomato pizza, root beer, Friday night dinner with dad at Da Vinci's. Spanish moss hanging from trees like ghosts. Afternoon thunderstorms. My favorite reading spot in the library. Words when the delivery guy throws our bag of bagels onto the porch from his bike. Thud and bagels, bagels everywhere. Love, comfort, family, roots, fun, heart, calm, happy, safe, my home. That's just chapter one. I can't wait to read the rest. Normally, when I dive into a book, I want to find out a little bit more, and I'll read the back cover. This one just has some reviews on it. I might read the inside flap, so let's see if there's a little bit more information that we can gain. Um, some insight on this story from the front flap of the book cover for the first rule of punk. There are no shortcuts to surviving your first day at a new school. You can't fix it with duct tape like you would your Chuck Taylors. On day one, 12 year old Malou, Maria Luisa, if you want to annoy her, inadvertently upsets Posada Middle School's Queen Bee, violates the school's dress code with her punk rock look, and disappoints her college professor mom in the process. Her dad, who now lives a thousand miles away, says things will get better as long as she remembers the first rule of punk, be yourself. The real Malou loves rock music, skateboarding, zines, and sorizo. Hold the cilantro, please. Sorizo, that is. And when she assembles a group of like-minded misfits at school and starts a band, Malou finally begins to feel at home. She'll do anything to preserve this, which includes standing up to an anti-punk school administration to fight for her right to express herself. Now I really can't wait to read the rest. I hope you uh, find this book too. You can find it in our digital resources. We do have a hard copy or two. If you want to place those on hold, make an appointment to come pick them up when they're ready at the main library through library takeout. Excuse me. But you can find this either on Overdrive or Hoopla using your library card through the Alameda Free Library website, alamedafree.org. Be sure to check out the rest of our programming. Find us at the Children's, uh, children's Activities page under Children's Services at alamedafree.org. Bye.